Hello, welcome back. The title here is called The Surface Area of Square-Based Pyramids. This is part one. So what we want to do in a nutshell is figure out what the surface area for a pyramid uh, like this would be. And so what we're going to do in the beginning is draw a picture and write down the equation or the formula that calculates the area. But more than that, I don't want you to just use a formula that I give you. I want you to understand where it's coming from. So when you think about what's going on here, we have a triangle on this face. Now this is a square face, a square based pyramid. So one, two, and then behind three, and then four sides, square based, right? And we have a triangle on this face, a triangle here, a triangle face on the back, and a triangle face on the side. So we have four triangle faces, on one on each side of this square based pyramid. And then of course the base of the thing is actually a square. We know how to find the area of all these triangles. We know how to find the area of any squares, just uh, you know the length times the width, right? And so we can write down the area for this thing. So let's uh, first take a look at what you might see in a textbook or from your teacher or something like this. And then we will go from there. So here we have a pyramid. I'll try to draw a good representation of it. It will not be perfect. I'm not an artist, so don't you know, don't get too mad at me. But this is basically a pyramid, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to say that this pyramid has a height, a slant height, uh, from the very tippy top to the kind of to the center down the side of the thing here, and that is going to be called height h, right? So it's important for you to know that the height of this pyramid that we're talking about, it is not the direct vertical height all the way to the ground. It is the slanted height, because the sides of the thing are triangles. It is the slanted height that goes from the top all the way down the sloping side to the base. That's the height h that we're talking about here, right? And then the base of this thing has, uh, the distance here is b, right? We can call it B. Some people will call it S for, for side. I'm going to call it B for base of the pyramid. And notice it's a square based pyramid. So this side over here is also B and the side on the other side and the side over here, they're all the same length. They're all uh, length B, even though the drawing may not look like it because I'm drawing it on a board. Every length of the side is B and that is because it is a square based pyramid. Square based means the base of it is a square, right? So how would we find the area of something like this, the surface area of something like this? Well, what we would say is that we know we can find the area of, let's just call it this triangle right here. The base is given as B and the height, which is the height uh, from the bottom here all the way across the surface to the top, the slant height H is the height of that triangle. So one half times the base times the height, right? That is the surface area of just one of these four triangles, but we have four of them. We have one here, one here, one in the back, and one on the side. So this area of this one, we need to multiply it by four to capture the area all the way around of all four sides of this thing going all the way around. So this area is the area of the triangles that go all the way around, the four triangles. But we have to add to that the area of the base. When the base is a square, it is side B, B, the other side is B, and the final side is B. So you could call it B times B, length times width, right? So what we will do is rearrange this thing a little bit, the surface area. Let me take the four and just put it in front because they're all multiplied together. So I can call it four uh, times one half times the base times the height, right? Plus, and instead of b times b, let's just write it as b squared because that's what, that's what it means to multiply by itself. You know, two times two is two squared. Three times three is three squared. 4 times 4 is 4 squared, and b times b is b squared. So this is what you, you might see in a book. In fact, you might actually see it a little bit uh, differently written, because if we multiply the 4 times the half, 4 times a half is just 2, so you can write it as 2 times b times h plus b squared. You can write it as 2 times b times h plus b squared. So in your book, you probably are going to see this equation. But the problem with this equation, the reason I don't like using it, is because it hides what you're doing. Because you see 2bh, and you're like, okay, why is it 2bh? You don't know because you, maybe you didn't know where they got it from. And why is it b squared? Why, why is this thing squared? We've never done squares with, it, with area, so why is it squares? So by going through the process, you can see that it's 1 half times the base times the height. That's the area of one triangle times 4. But when you multiply that out, this is what you get. And then the area of the base, b times b, that gives you the b squared here. So I want you to see where the equation comes from. But ultimately, 
we're not gonna use it because I don't wanna use it. I want you to understand what we're doing. Let's go calculate the surface area and see how we would really do it. We have a triangle on this face. It is two millimeters long at the base and the slant height all the way up that triangle is three millimeters. So the area of that triangle is one half times the base times the height, right? But the base of this thing is two, right? And the height of this thing is three. So one half times the base times the height, right? But then this whole thing, I have actually, I can put it in brackets if you want to here. It doesn't really matter. This whole thing is the area of that first triangle, but I have four of those things. So I'm gonna multiply the whole entire thing by four, right? Which means the brackets don't really do anything. I can take them away, right? And then I have to add to that the area of the base. I have two millimeters times two millimeters here, which means two times two, or you can write it as two squared if you want to, but why do we need to get so fancy? Just write it as two times two. That's the area of the base. So all I have to do now is multiply all this stuff together. Now you can multiply any way you want, but let's just multiply one half times two. One half of two is just one, right? So that's one, then times three, then times four, because this, this becomes a one, then times three, then times four, then we have a plus four here, right? So the surface area of this thing, uh, one doesn't do anything, three times four is 12, plus four, and the surface area will then be 16. And 16 what? Well, it's millimeters for the length and millimeters everywhere, so it's a surface area, so it's gonna be square millimeters or millimeters squared. So let's put 16 right here, square millimeters or millimeters squared. Notice that I did not use the formula. I could have, I could have put two times B times H plus B squared and then put the numbers in here, but the problem with that is it's fine, it's just that you kind of lose sight what you're doing. And you're, 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 you're just cranking the math and you're, you're getting an answer, but you don't really know what the equation means anymore. By doing it this way, you just say, well, this is the area of this triangle, and then I have four of them, and then this is the area of the base, and I add it up, and you know exactly what you're doing. So that's the way that I personally would do it. I would never look up that formula and use that formula in real life. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. The units are kilometers, so let's find the surface area. What is the area of this one single triangle? Well, it's one half times the base, which is four, times the height, which is also four. Now that's the area of this one triangle, but I have four of those triangles all around, so I'm gonna multiply by four again, right? And then I'm gonna to add to that the area of this base. It's a square base, so it's four times four. You see, I didn't write any equation down, but I know that it's length times width for the base, and it's one half base times height for the uh, triangle. So what is one half of two? I'm sorry, one half of four, it is two. Then you have four times four, and no, equals, we need a plus sign right here. Four times four is 16. Two times four is eight, and then eight times four is 32 plus 16, All right? And you can line these up and add them if you want, but you can just start at 32, go 10 more to 42, and then plus six more is 48. And you can do column addition if you want, but 48 here, and the units, are in kilometers, so this is gonna be in square kilometers, and the answer will be 48 square kilometers. And that's the final answer. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Okay, we have a, a square base pyramid where the length of the base is four and the slant height along the side of the thing is seven. So what would be the surface area? Well, the area of this triangle is one half base times height, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna add two, I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by four, and then I'm gonna add to that the area of the base, which is base squared. I, usually I don't write it down, but this time I did, just out of habit, All right? So what do we have here? One half, the base is four, the height is seven, and I'm gonna multiply that, that entire area times four because I have four triangles around the outside. And then the area of the base is four times four, which is four times four, I'll just write it as four times four. Now. What do we have here? What is one half of four? It's just two. Then we have times seven times four, and then this becomes 16. Four times four is 16. Now what is two times seven? That's 14, uh, and then we have to multiply by four. And then we have 16. Now 14 times four may not remember, so let's go over here. 14 times four, we have 16, and then this is a five uh, right here. Four plus one is five, so we have right here 56 plus 16. So again, you can do it uh, by hand or with a calculator. You can just add these guys up. You get 12, five, six, seven, and the answer is 
72. 72 what? Well, the units were centimeters, so this is going to be in square centimeters. We'll write it down as 72 square centimeters. I wrote the equation down out of habit, but I didn't actually really use it. I just mostly tried to figure out the area of the sides and the base and just write it all down, and, and that's how we did it here. I have one more. Uh, let's take this down, solve one more, and call it a day for this lesson. All right, here's our last problem. We have a pyramid with a base of eight along each side and a slant height of 10 inches. So what is the surface area gonna be? The area of this triangle is one half base times height. The base is eight inches. The height here, which is the slanted height, is 10 inches. And then we need to add to that, uh, I should say before we add to that, that's the area of this one triangle, but we have four triangles all the way around, so we'll multiply that by four. And then we add to that the area of the base, which is eight times eight. All right, so what do we have? One half of eight is four. So we'll put a four there, 10. Then we have a four here. And then eight times eight is 64. So what do we have here? We have, if we do the four times four first, that's 16, right? And 16 times 10 is 160. We just add the zero when we multiply by 10. And then plus 64. So we have 160 plus 64. So you can go off to the side, 160, 64. You get a four, a 12, carry, and a two. So we get 224. And the units, because they were all in inches, are in inches squared, or square inches. So 224 square inches or inches squared. So again, here, we have learned how to calculate the surface area of a square-based pyramid, right? And so we didn't really use the equation, even though I showed you in the beginning how to get the equation, what you would typically see in a book, but really, when you're finding area, I find it easier just to chop it up into little pieces and add them all up. That's all we're doing here. And I find that you have better intuition about what's going on when we do it that way. So solve this yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll have a few more problems where we'll have some fractions and decimals, make it a little trickier. But ultimately, the concept is the same. Follow me on to the next lesson, and we'll conquer it right now.